In this short video, I'm going to guide you through the proper troubleshooting procedure to locate a faulty contactor on the residential split air conditioning simulator. To begin, we're going to start at the thermostat to ensure it's calling for cooling. Click on the thermostat icon here at the bottom right of the page, which will take you right to the thermostat. Once there, click on the blue square here to set the thermostat for cooling. Next, we're going to take a brief inventory of which electrical loads are running. We're going to start at the indoor unit. So if we click on this icon here at the bottom right of the page, um, it helps to have your speakers turned up and you can hear that the blower is running. Uh, but for further verification, simply turn the unit slightly and you can see this circling arrow uh, graphic here that's placed here to indicate that the blower is in fact running. Our next step is to go to the outdoor unit and see if the compressor and condenser fan are operational. Click on the outdoor unit icon and when we get to the outdoor unit we can see that neither the condenser fan nor the compressor is operational. The compressor would make a hum, uh, obviously it's not visible that it's running. An additional verification would be to check the current draw using the clamp on ammeter which is located in the toolbox over here on the left. Uh, we could take that out and determine if the compressor is running. Simply open up the control panel, zoom in a little bit, and place it around the glowing hot spot here. And we can see here at the bottom left that we have no current draw. So again, this verifies that neither the compressor nor the condenser fan are running. We're going to store the clamp on ammeter away now in the toolbox. And we're going to take a look at the troubleshooting flow chart here. Now, this is a procedure guide here. You have the option of a tree like this, or you can just simply use this procedure guide, which will walk you through each step in the troubleshooting procedure. Now, if you can, if you look here, we've already turned the thermostat on. Uh, the indoor fan is running. The outdoor fan and compressor are not running. Our next step is to measure for 24 volts at the contactor coil connections. Now to get to that, simply click on this magnifying glass and it'll take us right to the contactor. We're going to click on the toolbox icon here at the top left and we're going to take out the digital multimeter or volt ohm meter and just drag it out of our way a little bit. We're going to turn it to AC volts and we're going to measure for voltage at the contactor coil. The coil is located in the base of the contactor and we're going to place the red lead here. You may need to turn the unit or zoom in to properly place the leads. And when we do this, we place the black lead over here. We can see that we do have 24 volts to the coil. This verifies that the thermostat is functioning. It's sending power from the Y terminal to the contactor coil. Uh, if we take a look at the wiring diagram here on the right hand side, the second tab down, we can see if we zoom in just a little bit that the contactor coil is located down here on the bottom of the diagram and it has a yellow wire that comes from the Y terminal of the thermostat to the contactor coil. That's this yellow wire right here. So the thermostat's functioning. Our next step if we use the procedure guide is to measure for voltage at the line side of the contactor. Now a split air conditioner has a separate disconnect for the outdoor and indoor unit. So even though the indoor unit is functioning, it's possible we have a, a faulty disconnect or possibly a tripped breaker. So what we're going to do, we're going to move the meter leads to the line side of the contactor, which is here, and we're going to look for 240 volts. And as we can see on the meter, we've got the 240, which verifies that the contactor is receiving line voltage. Uh, the coil is receiving low voltage. So therefore, at this point, we should have 240 volts at the line side of the contactor. Our next step is to check for 240 volts AC at the load side of the contactor, which is the top portion of the contactor here. This is where the power is being fed to the compressor and the condenser fan motor. So we're going to move the meter leads to the load side and see if we've got 240 volts there. Again, if you need to rotate or zoom in to properly place the leads, do so. And as we can see here, we've got zero volts uh, coming out of the contactor at the load side. Now we have line voltage, we have 24 volts to the coil, and this should be closing at this point. We should have 240 volts here. So this verifies that the contactor is faulty, although prior to replacing it, my suggestion is to check the wiring connections. And you can do that very simply by clicking on the connections and just tighten 
Um, as we can see here, the black wire is already tight here. We can click on the red wire to make sure that's tight. And in fact, that is already tight. And we want to make a check on the load side as well um, and just tighten those up. So we've tightened all the connections and we're going to simply replace the contactor now. Simply click on the contactor and click replace. The cost of this procedure is $190 and we're going to proceed. And as we can see, this corrects the problem. We're going to store the meter lead back in the toolbox. Now don't forget to close all covers and replace all caps and covers on the unit. Our next step is which is actually our last step, is to go back to the indoor unit and look around for the broom. Uh, we're going to click on the broom, which allows us to clean the work area, which gives us our fifth star. Good luck. Hey, it is Craig with Interplay Learning. We hope you enjoyed this last video. The easiest way to keep up with all of our latest videos is by subscribing to our page right here. Just to let you know, if you're interested to learn how simulations are critical to onboarding and improving you or your employees' performance in the field, please visit us at interplay-learning.com.